Hey, it's Pierce Podcast, Dr. Ray Ingram, and I'm with our senior, uh, Benjamin Trenton. So, sir, what year did you get to RCS? I came here fifth grade, so 2015. 2015, so fifth grade, right? Man, so what do you remember about fifth grade? Um, I remember my teacher, Ms. Thomas, and Mr. J. It was very, it felt normal, kind of, like, it didn't seem too crazy, mm -hmm. um, coming from a previous charter school. Yeah. Uh, it was a lot more, like, it was a lot bigger than from my previous, I used to go to CCH. Okay. In East Hampton, like, that yeah. like, closed down, and so I moved to RCS, and, um. That's a fun fact, I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was interesting. There were a lot of different, different uh, personalities. There was nice, uh, definitely see different um, cultures and different like backgrounds, which was nice to see. And it was a lot more fun. And I uh, definitely liked how they kind of ran things. It felt more in depth. So. Yeah. yeah. All right. So fifth grade. Now talking about your middle school experience. What was that like? It was. Definitely an experience. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's the time when you know everyone's going through different hormones, or whatever. Everyone's trying to figure out themselves. Everyone's doing crazy things, or some people not doing anything. <laughs> um, it was definitely time. It was definitely a big growth period for me. I think um, it was very humbling to see how I kind of like come up from there and um, left. That immaturity back there, you know, kind yeah. immature time, but I think I handled it pretty well. I was able to foster the friendships to carry on to high school, so I'm glad that I can continue that. And so my teachers, of course, have been studying the whole time. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. No, you guys got a squad. I, I heard you got a study group, and, and like, what is what is that like? High school, being high school, RCS, first class, and RCS. What's that like? It's very. I guess not like open, but like not what you think. Mm -hmm. right? Like sometimes I don't even know what it is. Right? <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's definitely something that is constantly changing and growing, and being able to experiment what works best for me and what works best for others and what works best for the school, um, and work towards finding that balance. Yeah. Um, Definitely a lot of hard work. Um, also, I mean, for me, it didn't seem like too much of hard work. Yeah. Um, even though there was less, um, like strict rules. Like, you know, like any of my post school that had like they've been doing this for years. Yeah. But because it's so new, it's nice that there's change and constantly developing. Because you know, I'm sure they have other public high schools are outdated, right? It's yeah. Sticking to the same thing doesn't really work. Yeah. And so yeah. So. Your, I think it was your ninth grade year, you guys were in the gym. Uh, tenth grade. Your 10th grade year. So your 10th grade year, you're in the gym, right? Like, so your whole class is in the gym learning because we didn't have space. What was that experience like for you? I mean, it's, conflict it's conflicting because it's like, I remember it's like, oh, it was so bad. Oh, I couldn't focus. The teachers hated it. But for me, I didn't mind. I mean, I kind of liked it. I liked being open and having space to do activities for fun whenever I could. Um, it was never really too much of a distraction for me. I was able to maintain my grades and stay focused. And yeah, I think it, it, was, it was honestly fun for me, but I know it was really hard for other people. Yeah, but you, do you understand why it was hard for other people? Yeah, definitely. There's definitely a lot of distractions, other noises, colliding with other classrooms. Um, I'm sure the teachers hated seeing people like you know walking around and wanting to play yeah. because they're in a gym. And, yeah. yeah. So the natural inclination of being in the gym is like, man, I'm trying to move. Right. I'm trying to do something. Not trying to learn, right? And like, I think the reason why I asked you that question is because, man, I couldn't imagine learning like a year in the gym. But even though you guys did a year in the gym and we had promised you a space and we couldn't deliver. You stayed with us, right? Now, was that a hard choice or like what was? That was, a, that was definitely a hard choice. Um, 
picking between here and ESL, especially for sports. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm glad I stayed through because I feel like I, I would have had less stress mm -hmm. staying. Right? Okay. I, like I would have had more stress, and I felt like I would have become a lot more known to different things. Like I feel like if I went to a public school, I would probably be more to myself or like um, just like trying to get it done, and then I would definitely dread the graduation day a lot more. Yeah. Yeah, but you probably would have been like all state, cross country, and like all these things. So you made some sacrifices in terms of staying with us and being uh, one of the first graduate uh, graduates of, of RCS. What, 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 what is talk to me about that? Like, what's your thoughts? It's just really deciding what I want to do in my future. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest factor that kept me was. Um, friends and teachers because if I had left I would have had two years to get to know my other teachers so recommendations would have definitely dropped the quality a lot and sports I love sports so much I definitely think I could I definitely could have been like top dog right but it's not a reality for where I want to go in the future mm -hmm. um, it's kind of, it would just be kind of fun right because like I'm not gonna remember it in my years to come. Like, oh yeah, I did that in high school once, but where did we do? You know. Yeah. And so, if I'm given the opportunity in college, then I'm able to make that on my own, and it's, it won't it won't affect me too much mm -hmm. um, because it's just not ultimately the most important thing in my life. Yeah, I love that, man, and I love hearing you say that. So, nice. So you make an, ex uh, an excellent point, right? And this is a segue to like what you want to do in the future, right? And so you got some big dreams, right? And so you've always been a, a big dreamer. And so talk to me about this college that you got accepted into, that's your dream school. Right, yeah, my dream school, BYU. So, um, I mean, it was- So for the folks that don't know, BYU, Brigham Young University, yes. R1 University in Utah, correct? Yes. Okay. D1 school. D1, baby. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's a, a college that is uh, co like works with and found uh, um, in tune with like my church mm -hmm. and my beliefs, and they have a location in Utah, in Hawaii, Idaho, and Jerusalem. Um, so it's very big, very nice, and it's um, a place of comfort, especially with my church and my religion. So it's kind of like home, right? Yeah. So you you got accepted to come home, basically. Yes. I love that for you. Uh, I remember, um, and I'm dating myself now, but um, Sean Bradley, who was like a seven six center uh, that played for Utah and ended up going to the league, where he had uh, he had to do his uh, his two years of mission prior to going to the NFL. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sorry, the NBA. My bad. Not NFL. Um, so talk to me about, 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 about mission and being mission aligned. Like, what does that mean for you? So for me, I plan on going on my mission. Uh, there's different kinds of missions. There's proselyting, which is where you go out and full time and preach wherever you are. And there's also service missions, which is the same thing. It's just you typically get to stay in local areas and you know, sleep in your own home. But they both accomplish the same things. Um, mission for men, it's a two year period. And for women, it's uh, 18 months. Um, of course, you can leave if, you have, if there's anything, any problems you need to, or you can extend it a little bit by another like, six weeks. But basically, it's an opportunity to grow yourself and also um, the church and help bring people together. And it's not just preaching the gospel, but it's also providing service, mm -hmm. helping those that. Um, we're going through a tough time, or you know, something as simple as like mowing a lawn, right? Or paving a driveway, you know, for people that need help with that, and just being able to be that as disciples of Christ and um, just help make the world a better place. Yeah, I love that, man. You at this age trying to make the world a better place, man. I've been trying for over 20 years to make the world a better place, and I'm sure you will do a lot better than me. I had you this whole school. <laughs> so, um, talk to me about your SATs, man. 
So you had you had the score for now to be able to get into some of the schools that you got into. And so what was what do you feel like was like the best preparation for you in terms of preparing for SAT? To be honest, um, I really like that. I definitely am super lucky that I got in the time I came in yeah. with having a SAT optional. Yes. Because with COVID, it was all screwed up and I feel like I wasn't able to prepare for the SAT. Mm -hmm. So and it is a little my fault for not really studying for it. And I didn't do too great. I didn't do what I wanted to do, how, how well I wanted to. Uh -huh. uh, you, did, you still did pretty good though. It was okay. <laughs> 12, like, okay, so I got 12, uh, 1270. That's pretty amazing. Right. But some of the competition, <laughs> like even like UAU, the average is 1350. Okay, you're not that far off. Right, but it's still <laughs> kind of like a humbling, like, okay, you know. But I definitely think if I devoted myself, I could have been a lot better. Of course. But I'm just so grateful that COVID, obviously, it, like, it messed up a lot of things, but it also helped that the schools were allowing me to be more forgiving for that. Yeah. So I asked that question because, you know, with affirmative action um, being uh, dismissed or whatever, right? And then with uh, some colleges, uh, taking away uh, SAT, making an SAT optional. You got some schools that are bringing it back. So like, for example, Dartmouth College uh, is bringing back the SAT uh, for whatever reason. Uh, I think it's the only Ivy of date that's doing that. What are your thoughts on that? Like, do you think that that's fair? Or? Um, I think for now, that seems pretty fair. I think anyone who's able to commit to it can do it. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that's something that would start like later than earlier, right? Like, yeah. There's definitely more time to prepare because I'm sure a lot of freshmen have no experience in like EVP SATs yet or whatever. But since we're kind of getting back to normal, it makes a little bit of sense. But um, I personally don't think SATs or SATs are a great example of a student. Why? Why? There's a big difference between someone who's able to take a test and someone who's able to read and, um, retain information and someone who's able to be creative and mm. um, a good student. A student is anyone who's willing to learn yeah. and someone who is able to um, try their best. And sometimes tests kind of get in the way of that, right? And if we focus too much on teaching kids on how to take a test, then they're not going to really know how to use any education in the real world and yeah. why it's most important. And that's why it's so important to be more hands on and creative and open minded with the world and stuff. Instead of just, oh, this is A, this is B, this is C, right? Um, SATs, I think, they focus too much on just like, I don't know, it's just too much. Like, I'm, I'm an all right test taker. Yeah. Like, I don't mind it, but the SATs, man, like, I just feel like that's not going to reflect who yeah. I am, right? Yeah. So, you know, I don't think they reflect um, the potential of a true student. That's pretty profound, man. Like, if I was making a commercial and, like, I cut that clip right there, Man, I think everybody in the world would not take an SAT. So SAT, y'all better look out because uh, I don't think people will be taking that test if, if you really understood the impact from a child's perspective, um, how much impact that has on you. So thanks for sharing that. So there's a lot of schools that you turned down, man, that you about to turn down. You got to be a dream school, bro. And so what do, what do they have to look out for in terms of uh, ben, Benjamin Tran, incoming freshman? Well, I'm definitely going to go hard in social ed, right? Being able to uh, network around and they're known for one of the best business schools. And so I'm really looking forward to, you know, expanding in that, like expanding myself in that kind of environment and um, preparing for the world to succeed as best as I can. Yeah, so like what's the ultimate goal though? So you're going, you, you, you enroll in a, a biz, as a business major, mm -hmm. right? So like what's, what's your ultimate goal? Though? My ultimate goal is to be able to support my goals, my family, and whatever fun I can do, I want to do with it. You know, I'm not, I don't like, I see the value in security and like, you know, corporate or whatever, but I also see, I don't, I'm not going to turn my life into, um, like, what's the word? work to live or live to work, right? So I think I definitely want to find find a balance in between that, right? Yeah. Because it's not all about the money. Yeah. But it's sad that like, but you need money to do certain things and to be able to um, grow in other aspects of life and stay uh, 
my superiors. Yeah, that's pretty profound coming from a, a young gent like yourself, man. And I appreciate that. So I learned a lot about you today. I never knew that you went to that school um, uh, prior to coming to RCS. So that, that is amazing. Um, I said that it got it got shut down, um, but I'm glad you came here. I'm glad you found us. Yes. Right, and we found you. Right. Uh, anything else you want the people to know about management training in the senior class at RCS? Um. Everything is not how it seems, you know? I mean, I think there's also a lot of backlash with like people in general with like politics and stuff, and people always talk about like his past history. I think um, as important, history is super important. And it's yeah. important to learn about it and be educated and not to be ignorant about it, right? But it's also important to use that so that you can grow from it and learn from it and change and fix, right? Um, and I think that there's been good progress and that there's no point in maintaining a still perspective of the past. Like, we don't, we don't judge other Americans for living in a country whose first president owned slaves or whatever, right? It's the same way. It's, there are just tons of... Uh, Who doesn't judge them? <laughs> well, I'm just saying, like, like, I don't look at an American and I'm like, oh, you would, or like, if, or someone in, like, uh, Italy, if someone's Italian that lives in Italy, I'm like, oh, you're 10,000 years ago, you had a king that did all these terrible things. How could you live in Italy? Well, things change. Mm -hmm. Things are evolving, right? And I think it's important to stay open-minded and, um, you know, assume the best. Yeah. Assume the best. Best intent. Right? Yes. Assume yes. the best, expect the logical, yeah. and prepare for that work for the worst. Yeah. 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 You sure you don't want to be a teacher? I mean, I'm not invited, but I think there's um, bigger things in life for me. I think that's a big question, like whether or not my potential is being used to the fullest at capability. It's not something that I'm constantly um, debating about, you know. Because I can see myself in any field, thriving in, you know, researching cancer, or being yeah. a doctor, or teaching the next generation, or building houses, whatever it is, you know. There's, yeah. always, there's always that dilemma of whether or not you're doing the best thing for the world, but also the best thing for yourself. Yeah. So, what was what, your current cumulative uh, grade point average? Uh, four point oh. Yeah. Four point oh, right? And you're on your way to BYU Provost. Yes. That is amazing, man. Thank you for taking time uh, out of your busy schedule because I had to kind of reschedule with you three times <laughs> in, order to, in order to get you here, man. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir. Hi. All right. All right. <laughs> that was nice. See, I, I didn't beat you up, right? No.